Uh, and it's really inexcusable that that facility met no standards at all. So there's no way to judge whether or not the facility in Benghazi was secure because it met no standards. And that was an intentional decision by the State Department. But we've been told forever now that no military asset could have reached Benghazi in time. And what we now know is uh, that's true because nothing was ever headed toward Benghazi. And I think if the military leaders were with you, and I, do, I try to be fair to everyone, it's, it's, I, I try to be fair, I think the military leaders would tell you that they thought an evacuation was imminent. So you then ask the military leaders, what led you to believe that? Because the folks on the ground didn't believe that. And there was no method by which you were going to evacuate. So just those two screens, what was really happening in Benghazi versus what was being discussed in Washington, the contrast is pretty vivid. Secretary Panetta, this was seven o'clock Washington time when he issued his order. Uh, then we move into this two hour White House meeting where they say it is a discussion of what what assets to deploy. Well, if you believe the Secretary of Defense, that conversation has already taken place. And I, I, I handle his question myself because I wanted to make sure I understood what he said. Active tense, deploy, you don't need to come back and talk to me, and there are only two people in our military chain of command, the Commander-in-Chief, the Secretary of Defense, and we have both spoken. And my question for, for, for Mr. Bash was, what principles were left to be consulted? You heard from the Commander-in-Chief, you heard from the Secretary of Defense. What are you deputies talking about? If the two people in our chain of command have already said go and go now, what's left to discuss? And I guess, Andrew, my, my, my other point would be this. Cairo had happened. So, so it wasn't a theory that this video... The embassy video, had come under attack in Cairo. It, it, so, okay, so maybe we were caught off guard in Cairo, although we weren't. We had advance notice. Go ahead and give that to the Department of Defense. Cairo happened. How did you change your posture or your readiness after Cairo? And the answer was they did not. So it, it is hard for me to explain to the families of those who were killed how the video became such a central talking point while the attack was going on, but nobody did anything about the video before the attack happened. That is difficult to explain uh, to moms and wives. But, but in fairness uh, to everyone involved, uh, Chris Stevens loved the people in Benghazi. And he had not been back to Benghazi since being named the ambassador. He wanted to go in August, but uh, security and, and religious holiday reasons kept him from doing it. There was a vacancy in the principal officer's position, and to his everlasting credit and heroism, Chris Stevens assigned himself to fill that vacancy. Um, and he went. Um, and when he got there, he realized just how bad Benghazi was. So he canceled his off-property movements. In fact, he kept postponing his meetings because our intelligence guys were telling him how bad it had gotten and he wanted to hear it.